on-the-scene video coverage of TCT 2012 is supported by Prodexa. Well, the master trial looked at a novel stent that has a mesh around the stent that can keep thrombus and other material out of the lumen of the artery. And when studied in STEMI patients, seemed to have improvements in ST segment elevation resolution, something that we would expect. It's uh, a stint that has a micro nesh so that when you put the stint and you inf inflate the stint, it tr can trap the uh, atherosclerosis and clot behind the stint. And so the theory is by trapping it, it prevents microemboli. The good news from the MASTER trial is that we might have a new therapy that is actually quite useful for acute myocardial infarction patients undergoing primary PCI. Seen in the MASTER trial were a variety of different benefits on surrogate outcomes, and those surrogate outcomes perhaps would translate into benefits in clinical outcomes. There isn't really bad news. I think the trial is underpowered, and when one looks at the clinical outcomes, death, and infarct size, there isn't enough information to really tell you whether or not there is a difference between uh, the patients that had stents and those that had regular stents. Anything that can further improve primary PCI has the potential to impact millions of patients. It turns out that the really good news is that TIMI flow seemed to be improved and that ST segment resolution, that is the ST segment elevation resolution over time, was much quicker in patients that received this covered stent. And therefore, it seems as though this stent may have possibly significant impact in patients that are having acute myocardial infarction. The theory behind it, it really makes sense to me. Um, and in practice now, it showed that the stint was successfully placed and that in these two surrogate endpoints, you had a significant improvement. Um, now, whether that translates into clinical ben benefit, we'll have to see. Well, the endpoints that have looked at of ST resolution and flow are definitely the key endpoints that we first look at to see whether something aimed at improving flow does. Uh, and we've done this for a decade. Uh, Mike Gibson's done this for the, for the Timmy studies. Um, and so those have been validated endpoints as being important. What they found is roughly the ST segment resolution, which I think is a really an adequate surrogate entrant, decreased from about 60% to about 45%. Um, so 60% of those patients who got the new stent had complete ST segment resolution, which means excellent perfusion, versus only 45% with standard stinting. Well, ST segment resolution has been a validated endpoint uh, that we think of as improved coronary flow and the consequence of that, certainly encouraging. Um, how that will translate in a large number of patients into clinical outcomes is less certain. The new stint or the novel stint had about 93%, 92 or 93% Timmy grade three flow in contrast to about 82 or 83 percent. So again, a uh, pretty similar correlate in about 10 percent extra patients with Timmy 3 flow. Whatever improves Timmy flow we've long believed has a correlation with improving outcomes. That hasn't held up a hundred percent of the time, but it's held up a lot of the time. We know frequently from other trials that although Timmy flow may be better and downstream flow may be better in acute myocardial infarction, it doesn't seem to have much effect on clinical outcome events. This study of a novel stent shows that there is potentially room for improvement in the care of patients with ST segment elevation MI undergoing primary PCI. Now, whether it's specifically with this technology or not will be the matter, I hope, of future studies. Certainly the stent and the data presented here seem very promising, but there needs to be a much larger confirmatory study powered for clinical endpoints.